beach cliff, bite-sized herring in soybean oil. Product of Canada. I'm expecting these to be a bit bland. Typically, Canada produces a quality, meaty substance in their cans, but not always a burst of flavor. And I don't see where this one is smoked, so it's probably not going to add a lot to it. Beach Cliff, not sure where that name comes from. It doesn't really coincide. Beaches and cliffs are really not the same thing. You want to lay out in the sand on the beach. You want to jump off the cliffs. Not sure how it melts together. If I'm correct, this company has been around for a long time. Let's take a look on the label here. I don't see an indication of that. But I think the company was started back in like the 1920s. So it's got a lot of integrity to be hanging in there so long. Unfortunately, so many of these older companies have been bought up by the food conglomerates. So they don't have the personal family interest that they once had. So quality tends to slip. Ingredients. Herring. Soybean oil. Contains. Herring. Soy. It never ceases to amaze me. The redundance of some of these simple statements. Okay. Distributed by Bumblebee Seafoods. Now there's a clue to who really owns it. Because Bumblebee is one of those conglomerates that sells a lot of different seafood. There's probably similarity between this and Bumblebee fish steaks, bite-sized herring. Nothing special about the can. Your regular aluminum tin, centered pull top. We'll see what's inside. It says lift ring, pull back. Let's try that again. Ah, it is visible between the ring. So I could have read that before in case I didn't know how to open the can. Believe me, there are people who don't. We'll move that backstage for safety. I'm less than impressed when I look at that because I'm expecting a glossy, thick oil in there, which adds flavor. And what I'm seeing is a watery mix instead. Now it's a bit thick, so yeah, it's oily, but I think a lot of the fish juice is mixed in there as well. I don't know that that's a fault of the canner or the, the company itself. Perhaps that's just the nature of this type of fish. Herring, I think, is a bit less oily than sardines or trout or salmon, so it probably gives off more watery fluids than oils. I'm going to discard this. The juice, that is. Do not attempt this at home. That would be a real mess. Now you can get a better look at what's in the can. A lot of these hair-like fish bones sticking out, rib bones. There's some fins and some skin. Like right there. I think that might be a fin. It's not, it's not the tasteful smell of smoked meat. I'm used to having smoked herring, and there's always such a good smell that it, you can't wait to eat it. I'm a little hesitant right at the moment. 
I'm not ready to dive right in. Let's see if we can lift one of these sections out and keep it intact. No, they break apart. But that's understandable. There, you can get a better look at all the little bones on there, which are hardly detectable when you're eating them. It's just that looking at them, if you don't like bones, it kind of plays games with your mind. Pretty firm and stiff skin on the back. Give it a shot. It's chewy. Not all that tasty. And you can see a substantial vertebrae there. It doesn't hurt you to eat that. But these are pretty simple to remove. So I think I'll discard that too. I love eating outside. There's a little bit more of uh, the skin and all that kind of stuff. Maybe that'll add a little bit of zest. Not exactly doing it. Once again, I think it's the nature of this particular fish. There's not a lot of flavor in it. So I may have to rely on the substrate I use to make the difference. There is a choice little section. We will position that strategically in a saltine cracker. My standard fare for food platforms. That made it worse. Two flavorless items in combination equals one flavorless combination. Ritz crackers. They have the added oil inside them, so they themselves have a little bit more flavor. Perhaps that will help it out. Voila. Ritz cracker. One thing that comes, one thing that's very noticeable, they're hard to remove from the tin without them tumbling and flopping around. So you want to be really careful or eat outside like I do. All right, we'll try this. Oh, that ain't bad. Ritz crackers, I think, have a little sugar in them, too. Even bread has sugar in it, believe it or not. The slight sweet taste in the Ritz cracker, that makes a difference with this. That's the way to go. Herring bites and Ritz crackers. But, just in case, I brought with me a secret weapon to try. Not much of a secret weapon, because I really don't know much about it. I've never had these things before, so maybe a secret flop. Hold on, I'll be right back. Parmesan crisps. I'm covering the name because I don't want any derogatory effects to happen to the company if these are a failure, which I think they're going to be. But these are like really popular all of a sudden. I see these for sale all over in the junk food aisles. So I've got to give them a try. They are made out of baked Parmesan shredded cheese. They are keto 
They are carnivore diet, safe, and they are, what's the other one, the Neanderthal, Neanderthal diet, paleo. They are paleo safe. But just to be sure, check that on the back. Don't take my word for it. Well, open the bag. Wow, uh, those look delectable. Those look like really nice little potato chips, but they're a little too small to... Let me rephrase. They are exactly the right size for herring bites. Hmm. Perhaps I'll test one first. Smell like Parmesan. Wouldn't exactly go to the store just to buy these. Hmm. Well, we'll see how it goes with the fish. Quite the balancing act here. Don't that look cute? A dainty fish bite on a Parmesan crisp. Sounds British. Anyone want a bag of Parmesan crisps? That didn't do it. Well, I guess I would say these herring bites are overwhelmingly okay. They are definitely nutritious because they're meaty, packed with vitamins, probably got some of the omega-3s, fatty acids in there. But if you really want an epicurean delight out in the woods in the backyard or if you really have to in the kitchen or dining room i might pass on these perhaps these would go much better in some kind of a combination food um, but by themselves they are just really bland and a bit chewy and aesthetically you know aesthetically there's something to be said about good-looking food. And this just doesn't really look all that great. I like to have my fish planked out lengthwise so it looks like a fish. Rather than it looks like cat food. But that's just me. Nothing against... The manufacturer at all absolutely not it's simply the style of cutting the fish into these kind of bites the lack of flavor and perhaps the unappealing fish juice that mixed in with the oil beach cliff perhaps if you could improve this by allowing the fish to drain first i'm not sure you're the experts on that but i would give it a thumbs I won't give it a thumbs up I will say it's definitely okay why don't you give it a try and see if your opinion is different than mine until the next time thanks for watching